Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to my channel. My name is TRG, the Relationship Guru, and on today's episode of Q&A, we got questions regarding finance, questions regarding proposals. Hope you're excited for that, and let's jump into it. So first one reads as such, Hey TRG, how's it going? I know your relationship channel and usually this is all relationship based, but I'm having a bad relationship with finances. I'm in my mid thirties. I have a really good job that pays me well, but I really am lost when it comes to finances. Can you please help me? I do have some things that I want to talk to you about. As you know, this isn't a finance channel, so I'm not going to be recommending any kind of stocks or certain types of investments that you should go into, whether it's crypto or anything like that. What I can say is it's best, obviously, to start early and often. Uh, you've probably heard that theory before, but it's never too late as well. Personally, I really didn't start that journey until probably my 30s, so I missed out on some of that when I was 20, but I think it's never too late to be able to do that. And right now, at least some of my savings is proof that works. If you look at some models on calculators online for compounding interest and take a look at how that works, you'll soon find that even just saving 50 or $100 per paycheck, you know, every two week cycle or whatever, however you get paid, makes a profound difference. It's funny that you should mention this question because I was actually talking to a girl at uh, Quiznos the other day. There's Quiznos that I frequent. And she was telling me that her financial advisor told her, just put aside $10 per paycheck. That's it. And you know what? She managed to save 1500 bucks. And that might not seem like a lot for a lot of people, but that's a lot of money to her. That's money that she can put towards a used car, put towards a course in college or university or whatever that might be. I don't know, like a trade school course or something like that to upgrade herself or whatever she wants to do. She can go on a trip if she wants to. But the point is, you know, saving even as minuscule amount of money as 10 bucks makes a profound difference in the long run, Dave. So don't be scared of that. Seek help. I think that's probably the second thing that I wanted to emphasize. Make sure that you go find good advice from a financial advisor. Okay, I know some people want to bootstrap this and do this themselves, and maybe they're qualified to do that, and they want to take that responsibility and onus on themselves to kind of save some of that commission. Me personally, this is just my personal opinion, I think that I could learn how to do this myself. Do I have the time to do this myself? No, I don't. I work a pretty demanding job that requires a lot of time. On my free time, besides obviously running a YouTube channel, I want to spend that time with my friends and family. You know, I want to spend time riding a bike, you know, going for a drive, like other things like that. And I want to leave that to the professionals that do this on a day to day basis. So that's my personal advice to you. Start early and often. It's never too late to do that, even if it's a minuscule amount and find professional advice, seek professional advice. At the very least, go listen to someone. And if you don't like what they have to say, then don't worry about it. You know, no harm, no foul, you know, find a different route, manage it yourself if you want to, but you're never going to know until you talk to a couple of financial advisors on what kind of plan they have for you and your money and, you know, establish certain goals that you want to hit as well, right? Like, do I want to get a down payment by the time I'm 35? You know, like, what does that look like? How much is that? You know? Do I want to buy a condo? Do I want to buy a house? Do I want to buy a townhouse? You know, like, do I want to save up for a trip or like my dream car? Things like this matter. And you need to start doing a lot of forward thinking on where you want to be in the next five, 10, 15 years. Thanks so much for the question, Dave. I really appreciate that. Next question. Question number two comes from Fanny from Texas. Hey TRG, how's it going? I have a crazy crush on my coworker. And normally they say, where you eat. In this circumstance, I have a real big connection with this person. I'm a firm believer of not where you eat, but the pull between us is just getting crazier and crazier. What should I do? Great question, Fanny. Thanks so much for writing in. I'm also a firm believer in not 
where you eat. I have personal experience with this. It did not end well. It's always a complicated dynamic when you are dating someone that is your superior, your peer, your subordinate always seems to get messy, whether or not they're in your department or even uh, another department, you know, within a bigger organization, there's always some cross departmental communication that's going on. Uh, I'm not just talking about people talking in the company. Sometimes it could be a conflict of interest in terms of like blurring the lines between a relationship and like a professional relationship when you're having to actually deal with someone on a day-to-day -day basis that is part of your work. So I would recommend that you probably stay away from that or at least if you really want to sit down and evaluate if you want to take that leap of faith, I think you really need to sit down and voice your concerns with that person as well because chances are if they're your coworker and they're hopefully thinking about this thing long term and you know the severity of it, they're also probably thinking about some of the worries that you're having as well. So I think having an open dialogue with that person is really important. Not that you should sit them down and ask them, hey, is this leading to marriage? Because I think that would probably scare off anyone on a first, you know, before a first date, before ordering like cocktails or a coffee. I think it's probably important that at least you voice your concerns and that person voices their concerns. Uh, the other thing that I would probably mention, I don't know if there's a clause in your contract with your company, you know, in terms of your HR and you know, not fraternizing, you know, amongst each other and stuff like that. I think that you should probably understand what that looks like and possibly disclose it to HR if you need to. The last thing that you want to do is jeopardize your employment just because, hey, I started dating this person from work. So hopefully that helps you, Fanny. It's, it's difficult for me to recommend against it or for it. Personally, I am kind of against it. I think that there's a sea full of billions of people that you can probably find if you feel that that's that strong of a connection to that person sure go for it you know you're never gonna know i guess until you try so that's my recommendation cool so our third question today guys comes from charles from baltimore and he writes in hey trg i'm under a lot of pressure right now i'm planning to ask my girlfriend's parents for her hand in marriage However, I just really don't know how to approach this situation. I don't even know if they like me. Great question, Charles. Thanks so much for writing in. So this is definitely a, a tricky one. Uh, you know, the dynamics with your probably soon to be father-in-law and mother-in-law. Uh, I think the most important thing that I can tap into is one of my friends a couple years ago, probably in 2015, kind of was in a similar situation to you. He flew over to Hong Kong with his now wife um, and he met the father and the mother. That was the first time they met. And he proceeded to tell them over lunch what his plan was for their daughter. He really kind of came up with this plan and he worked this plan into his life over the last couple of years. You know, he was mentioning things like, hey, look, I bought a pre-sale condo. It's actually going to close in the next six months. We are going to move into that together. It's a two bedroom, so there's a spare bedroom in case you guys want to you know, come visit us. We're planning to get engaged and get married next year. We're planning to have kids as well. You know, we've talked, like we've discussed these things. So, you know, hey, I have a good job. You know, it pays well, like I can take care of things. Not that she can't take care of her own, or she has a job as well but I think it was more so an emphasis on the fact that hey if you give me permission to marry your daughter and your blessing I would one really appreciate it number two and more importantly I want you to know that your daughter is going to be okay we're gonna be good I have a support system around me I have plans in front of me we're gonna be able to live a comfortable and safe life and I think at the end of the day, most parents, that's probably all they're asking for. You know, that's probably all they want for their kids. Uh, obviously, when your future parents-in-law, God forbid something happens to them, and I hope they live a very long and happy life, but when they go, they want to know that their daughter are taken care of, and, and they're, they're going to be safe, and they're going to feel comfortable, and, and all that kind of stuff. So I think as long as you approach that 
with a very earnest and honest vibe and motives, I think that will shine through automatically. This is not to say, Charles, that you need to have all the answers. I am almost 100% sure that my really good friend did not have all the answers at that time. He still does not have all the answers today. And neither does your girlfriend need to have all the answers. I think that the thought and the intent is what's important here. Okay, so hopefully that information helped you, Charles. I really do appreciate you writing it. Best of luck. Please write in the description on, on what happens. I'm, I'm uh, super excited to hopefully see if my advice helped you uh, to you know close the deal, <laughs> so to speak. Thanks so much for watching, guys. If you haven't already, please like, comment, subscribe. We really appreciate it. Ring that notification bell. And I want to hear about your comments and your experiences below uh, regarding finances, regarding proposals, regarding anything of the topics that we came across today. I'm sure you know someone that's affected or you've been affected yourself by it. Once again, we're trying to save the world one click at a time. I can't do that without your help. So please share that love with other people in your friend and family group that could benefit from some of this advice that you think, you know, hey, this channel could really help. We're super eternally grateful for that. That's the only way that this channel is gonna grow to the size that we want and it really affects the amount of people and help the amount of people that we really wanna help, okay? And at the end of the day, that's really what it's about. Last but not least, we post every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, so please stay tuned for future episodes. We have Real Talk on Mondays, our podcasts on Wednesdays, and of course, Q&A or face-to-face -face on Fridays. So super looking forward to that. I know we got some great episodes coming up, so stay tuned for that. Thank you so much for your time, guys, and TRG up. Take care.